Boom. All right, what's going on, you guys? It's Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I simply want to talk to you guys about why a strong US dollar is bad news for Bitcoin. This is going to be somewhat of a complimentary conversation to the video I posted a few days ago talking about why I personally believe Bitcoin is on its way back down to $20,000, which of course I do still believe. A few reasons for that right off the bat that we did cover in that video. Technically, Bitcoin is currently playing out a massive macro head and shoulders pattern and a very textbook one at that. Fundamentally, as many of you guys are aware, there are just a multitude of negative short term, make that very clear, short term negative fundamental optics surrounding Bitcoin with all the news and articles that we covered once again in that video. So today we are going to be supplementing the bearish argument, the short term bear case for Bitcoin with once again, the current strength of the US dollar. And I also want to cover this short article with you guys talking about the current lack of institutional interest in Bitcoin. I've been talking to my Discord to some people about that. A lot, I know a lot of people think that institutions are buying up these dips, but I think they're a little smarter than that. The big money knows how to allocate capital and they're waiting for those ultimate downside price targets to establish the best buying price they possibly can for their long-term positions, okay? So I do want to cover that with you guys as well. Once again, supplementing that short term bear case, still a long term bull, but short term, you got to stay rational. You got to read the tape. OK, you got to read the room. I know the bearish sentiment, the bears do upset some of you guys. That was very evident based on the amount of dislikes I got on the last video. But that's the game, you guys. Corrections are a healthy part of every bull market. They present opportunities to those who are in it for the long run. And if you don't see that, then you haven't been in the game long enough. All right. You can't take the heat. Get out of the kitchen. Let's get into it. As always, we'll cover each topic we're going to be discussing, and then we'll dive into each one individually in front of us. Trading view, where of course we only are going to be covering two charts today, looking at two charts Bitcoin and the good old Dixie or the US dollar, the DXY. This is the US dollar weighted against a basket of other international fiat currencies, basically weighs the strength of the US dollar. Bitcoin right now on the charts looking bad, Dixie looking good. And I will explain to you guys as we hop into Dixie on the charts, I do have Bitcoin open in front of us. That's just for the opening. That's for the intro, but we are actually going to kick it off with Dixie on the charts. Okay. So we'll take a look at Dixie first. As we do dive into the charts, talk about the strength in Dixie. And as we go over the technicals for Dixie, I will briefly explain to you guys. It's a very, very simple equation as to why a strong dollar is bad news for Bitcoin. Okay. So as we cover Dixie on the charts, I will explain that in, in very, very briefly as well. Okay. So take a look at Dixie, of course, close it out with Bitcoin on the charts. We will take, we'll actually close out the entire video. I'd say now I'll close out the video with this, but uh, as we move into Bitcoin on the charts at the end of the technical analysis uh, portion of this video, I will zoom out to the daily candles and we will revisit that massive macro head and shoulders pattern at play. And uh, that that does also coincide if you guys watched the last video with the reversion to the mean or the revisit of the initial high of Bitcoin's current rally. All right. So very strong technical bear argument, very strong uh, fundamental bear argument. Once again, you guys make it very clear. This is a short term bear argument. This doesn't mean I hate Bitcoin. I love Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a, a big reason that I created a YouTube channel, the cryptocurrency sector. But again, you have to stay rational at times like this, because if you can avoid emotion and can actually look at the charts and understand when is a probably a better buying opportunity and when's a potential selling opportunity to sell some of your position and reestablish a larger position on the way down, then that's what creates a good trader. You can just hold a long term. That's perfectly fine. You probably don't want to watch this video. But again, my game is trading. My game isn't wishing my game's trading. So I want to make that very clear to you guys. All right. So that is what we're going to cover on the chart today. Again, we will touch on this article as well. CNBC, JP Morgan stays bearish. Bitcoin says big investors just aren't buying the dip. So we will read a couple short paragraphs here. And again, just re again, just reinforce that short term bearish fundamental argument. Institutions, a big reason that Bitcoin did initially start taking off back in December is because there was there was a lot of institutional interest coming into the equation, a lot of big money, a lot of whales coming in here. 
again, institutions, hedge funds and stuff want Bitcoin. And that hasn't changed. That longer term sentiment hasn't changed. But they're not trying to buy Bitcoin. Maybe some are buying 30, 25K. But most of them, actually 25K is like has been my price target. A lot of you guys know that. So I do think institutions will start buying a lot more in the 20s. But again, you guys, these like, the technicals are so clear and so obvious right now that these these institutions are waiting for those ultimate price targets to be hit, kind of like I am. All right. So we will cover this um, on the charts. Just close out the video entirely with these fundamentals as well. Um, but before we do get into it, before we dive into all of this, I will ask you guys to please give the video a like. If you do go on to gain value from it today, roast me in the comments down below. Dislike the video if you think Bitcoin's going back to the moon. But of course, you guys. Always let me know. Rationalize your statements. Why do you think Bitcoin's going back up? If you think it's, if you think this is bottoming, and uh, again, right now it does not look like it's bottoming out at all. Um, let me know why that. Let me know why that is, or let me know if you agree with this. If you agree with this bearish short-term sentiment, and uh, if you are going to be buying the dip, and what your personal price target is. All right. So give the video a like, all that good stuff. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Want to catch more content like this? Check out the complete portfolio. I am releasing the Sunday Stock Watch exclusively to the portfolio tomorrow. Last week was for the first uh, iteration of that private exclusive Sunday Stock Watch that, did that I thought went very well. I was very happy with that. And I'm very happy to keep it going that way. Um, I don't know if how many of you watching right now are just trading the crypto markets, but I trade the stock market for the most part. My crypto holdings, honestly, I, I mean, I really like long term swing trade those. Um, most of that is is an established position that I'm holding for a very long time. So make that clear. I am a holder to, to a large extent. I do trade a little bit and I am waiting to redeploy some USDC back into cryptocurrencies. But for the most part, I'm a market trader. I trade the equity markets. And right now, this is, I'm not trading crypto at all. I'm not touching crypto. I'm very excited about EVs. And that's actually right after this one. I'm going to record the Sunday, the private Sunday stock watch for. So EVs, you guys, I'm so pumped going into this week. If you guys do want that private Sunday stock watch, if you guys want to know exactly how I'm trading, every, it's not even EVs. It's like reopening plays, biotechs, etc. Going into next week, Check this out. First link down in the description. 15 bucks a month. Appreciate it if you check it out. If not, no worries. Let's dive into these charts. All right. So Dixie, you guys know what we're looking at here. Good old Bula flag. So Dixie did short. I mean, okay. Let's break down the short term channel. So Dixie, after this breakout of resistance, of the resistance on the overall downtrend that was playing out for a very long time, technically at the end of May. Okay. So for over the course of the month of June, Dixie has technically been in breakout mode. It's been it's following that breakout. And actually right before that breakout, I guess it started this beautiful textbook ascending channel right here, been in an ascending channel. Once Dixie broke out of that channel, on june 16th that's when it started going parabolic okay so dixie did see a breakout of this ascending channel went parabolic did print a pretty textbook bull flag this is a beautiful bull flag right here you guys again this like if i see this i i'm I'll put the chances of a, of a breakout following this right here, which actually just in the, in the past eight hours broke out of this bull flag. Technically, this is very, very exciting. And I'll put the likelihood at another large move up at this point at around like 85, 90% even. Okay. Cause bull flags, as, as many of you guys know, if you've been following along with the channel are probably one of the most reliable technical patterns in the entirety of the market in the, in the, in the game of technical analysis, bull flag is my first, uh, personal favorite pattern. Okay. So I do think that, uh, we will see a very short term uh, breakout in Dixie. Why is that bad news for Bitcoin? It's not just bad news for Bitcoin. It's it's bad news primarily for inflation hedges. It's bad news actually for pretty much everything that trades against the dollar. Maybe aside from the U.S. equity market, like the dollar has had a strong week, but the U.S. equity markets, um, S&P, NASDAQ, the Dow have also had strong weeks, but that's because it's a U.S. based currency. So, of course, U.S. companies are going to flourish off a strong dollar. But inflation hedges specifically gold, silver. I just touched on this in the last video I posted talking about gold and silver legacy inflation hedges like gold and silver have gotten absolutely crushed this past week because they are inversely correlated to the U.S. dollar. The reason assets like gold and silver do well primarily is when the U.S. dollar is declining in value because of inflation and whatnot. OK, so when the U.S. dollar is weakening, safe haven assets like hedge assets like gold, silver and now Bitcoin, what I have deemed in the past and still do deem to be the king inflation hedge asset, the best inflation hedge asset on the entirety of the planet. That's bad news. Because when people want dollars, they want Bitcoin, gold, silver, inflation hedges less because the dollar is gaining strength. 
So once again, you guys, that could be a way more uh, eloquent, eloquently said conversation. I could articulate that a lot more and go into a lot more detail, but I don't feel it's necessary because it's so like, <laughs> just it's it's such a it's such a generally simple thing. Okay, so strong dollar, weak inflation hedges. Sorry, there we go. Strong dollar, weak inflation hedge assets. Anyway, technically, uh, again, right now the Dixie is breaking out. I do think that Dixie will come to play out let's get rid of that as we zoom out and we'll actually go to the daily okay so once we hop into bitcoin we'll go back to the four hour and close it out with the daily just like we're doing now so as you guys can see here dixie is in in the process of playing out a massive massive megaphone pattern obviously the reason that this is a megaphone pattern you can see these two cyan lines right here megaphone okay so two things can happen right now one is that dixie might play out this megaphone pattern i do think that at some point dixie if uh it, it, this is very, very dependent on the macro fundamental situation right now, or the macroeconomic situation, I should say, as far as like reopening and everything goes. If if economy is going to really kick back into gear, we will see what happens here. If economies do see some strength, if like right now, everywhere is busy. Hawaii is packed. Vegas is packed. Florida is packed. Like all the like Cancun, everyone's in Mexico. Everyone's in Cancun, right? So you have to imagine now that everything's reopening, people want dollars. People want dollars to spend. They're getting out of the markets. OK, so that's what you have to think about. Where are the strong areas as as we reopen and everything starts to explode again? The dollar is in higher demand when people want to spend dollars. OK, and that's what's happening right now. So I do think it's more likely than not if we were to test one side of this of this massive megaphone channel. I do think it's probably going to be the top side if this plays out by the end of July. If the dollar does really see some parabolic, exciting price action to the upside, we could see like we could. I mean, that's crazy. This would be pretty crazy price action for the dollar. I don't know if we come up this high, but I do think we do set a new shorter term high following the last high we saw back in March. OK, around ninety three and a half. So. I do foresee more upside in the dollar, which of course does make me bearish on Bitcoin. So enough of the dollar. It was primarily the fundamental, um, the fundamentals that I wanted to talk to you guys about here. Let's talk about Bitcoin a little bit, okay? So BTC, let's go back to the four hour we'll talk short term and we'll zoom out and take a look at that head and shoulders. So if you guys watched, actually, if you guys watched the video, let's get rid of that just for the intro. If you guys watched the video, um, the last one, the 20K Bitcoin is going to $20,000, massive head and shoulders pattern. Um, I was... That, that video timed out terribly. I think immediately after it was posted, bit like literally as it posted, Bitcoin probably saw a big old green candle right here. So I posted it, I posted it like right here and then Bitcoin just rallied up like 8%, okay? And I was like, God damn, I look like a fool. But still, I even after that happened, I addressed the Discord, I addressed the newsletter. I was like, you guys, like this is just a bounce. This is a short-term bounce. I guarantee that because this line of support on the short-term uptrend right here, this green line that I drew is so steep, and the sentiment is still bearish like it's still net net bearish trend okay so it's like it's it's probably gonna break below this and once it does we're gonna dump okay that ex exactly that happened broke below thirty four thousand dollars fell off a cliff started dumping again and now i couldn't be more confident that we are still gonna see at least 25k if not twenty thousand dollars okay so I do think for the most part, Bitcoin is going to follow this general, the general trajectory of this cyan blue line I've drawn right here. This acted has acted on this current downtrend as a very, very strong line of resistance. You can see a lot of touch points right here, broke above it, broke out a little bit, came back down, used that previous resistance as a new support, using it as support once again. So I do think Bitcoin is just going to follow this general channel down here until we reach this 20 to $25,000 mark. Okay. So if it follows this channel exactly this would happen on 4th of july okay so i don't always make a price to like very specific price targets like this i'm not saying this is going to happen but i'm calling it now i'm calling a twenty thousand dollar bitcoin on 4th of july and i know a lot of you might not be excited about those fireworks but i'm seeing fireworks because i know it's a chance to accumulate for the long term okay so 20k 4th of july market here all right so that is bitcoin technicals let's close it out once again because i did promise that i almost forgot with the massive head and shoulders pattern to play. Again, you guys, this is like the most textbook head and shoulders pattern I've ever seen. Whether it resolves here at 25, 24, 24 and a half thousand dollars or down here, which uh, I believe is way more likely at actually like 19.7. But again, you guys, as I've been saying, conservatively 25K, I'm personally comfortable accumulating, reinvesting at $25,000. But the lower it goes, the more I'm going to invest, okay? The more I'm going to reaccumulate for the long term because I'll close it out on the charts with this. I'm still bullish on Bitcoin long term. 
you guys don't know, if you guys haven't been following the channel for a while, if this is the first video you're seeing, I pretty much built my channel on Bitcoin, on Riot, on Mara. I'm so bullish on this sector long term. But I've also been in this for a long time. I understand this game at this point, fortunately. And this is just a part of it. This is just a part of the crypto game. And that's okay. Once again, though, if you can't take the heat, you got to get out of the kitchen. Or just stay in the kitchen and get calloused. Because that's that. If, like, actually, yeah. Yeah, stay in the kitchen, take the heat, get the burns, and then learn how to treat the burns. All right? Learn how to, learn how to withstand the burns. Because the burns are going to keep coming for the entirety of the market. Okay? Even with all the fundamentals at play right now in Bitcoin, even as, like, everything that's being developed around Bitcoin, around DeFi, etc., we're still going to see this. And that's evident because we are seeing it right now. Okay, so get used to it. Especially if you want to make money in the markets, that's that's just the game. You got to be able to take the downs along with the with the ups. Got to be able to bear the lows along with the highs. Okay, so Bitcoin, Dixie market on the charts. Let's close it out with this quick article on Bitcoin. So JP Morgan is maintaining its bearish outlook on Bitcoin despite the rebound in its price after its big dip earlier this week. Institutional investors who typically get exposure to Bitcoin through regulated investment vehicles like CMA Bitcoin Futures or the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. OG, OG member, one of the first, maybe if not the first stock analysis I ever did on this channel was Grayscale Bitcoin Trust over like wait, like a year and a half or so ago now, are still showing little appetite to buy the dip. JP Morgan analyst Nicola, Nick P., said in a note on wednesday p cited the deepening account uh, the deepening discount to net asset value on gbdc shares and the upcoming unlocking schedule as well as open interest in cme bitcoin and either future contracts but mostly he said bitcoin's highly volatile and boom and bust dynamics still present the biggest challenge to institutional investors Despite this week's correction, we are reluctant to abandon our negative outlook for Bitcoin and crypto markets more generally, he said. We rather view the past week's correction in the crypto markets as a continuation of the weak flow and price dynamics that have emerged from the last month already. Bitcoin funds continue to bleed even inflows into physical gold ETF stop. So once again, you guys, the flow into inflation hedge assets, the lessening of uh, like the the lack in interest at the moment in inflation hedge assets, once again, is based on the strength of the U.S. dollar. As the U.S. dollar appreciates in strength, it only makes sense, once again, that inflation hedge assets, Bitcoin being the king inflation hedge assets, depreciate in value. Now, will it level off? I do not think Bitcoin will go below $20,000. That's my personal belief. But I do think, as I said in last video, I do think Bitcoin will trade for a while within a range of twenty dollars to $25,000. I think that will happen. That is the true capitulation. That is the true accumulation, okay? And after that happens, the reason I do think that'll happen for a while, once we hit Bitcoin, once we hit 20K, Bitcoin isn't just gonna skyrocket to six figures. We're not going to 100K for a while, all right? You guys gotta get that through your head, okay? It's gonna take a while. After a correction like this, investor sentiment is low it's overall negative and it takes investors a while to regain that optimism to regain that positive sentiment around an asset that just kicked their ass okay so that's very important to keep in mind you guys my call bitcoin trades in a range of 20 to twenty five thousand dollars maybe for a little bit 25 to 30k but that general range 20 to thirty thousand dollars for quite a while how long i don't exactly know but i think it's going to be for longer than like i would say just generally a few months all right so that's is going to close out this video. Once again, you guys, please let me know down below if this video offended you. Again, can't take the heat. Buzz off, kiddos. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, I mean, not really. If you guys if you guys don't like this, then just don't watch it. All right? Don't watch. Okay? So, I'll talk to you guys in the comments downstairs. Talk about whatever you guys want. I'll catch you down there. Until next time, always remember, take action. Make waves. Peace.